Now, your Super Doppler 10 forecast from meteorologist Jeremy Wheeler. All right, let's take a look at what we have, the latest information. We're tracking the tropics. We've got three hurricanes out there. Florence is scary now. This is a Category 4 already. It just spiked in strength. Uh, it was expected to strengthen, but it happened very fast. National, the uh, hurricane hunters were out there examining and found that. I'll show that to you a closer view. Isaac Helene, we tracked those. Those look like they will stay out to sea. So here's the latest satellite on Florence, and the eye is very prominent now. It was already this morning, but now it's a sharper area, and that's a sign of a stronger hurricane. You can see the storms around it in red, those taller cloud tops. So this is moving off to the west. It is a formidable storm now, and again, I'll say it, it's scary. Now, here is the latest information, 130 mile per hour winds. It's on a westerly track. It's kind of gone uh, north and south a little bit here in its history, but now it's on a due west track at the moment, 946 millibars. Now, that may not mean much to you, but to me, that means that the pressure dropped quite a bit in a short time. It was about 960, 962. Now it's 946. So uh, that's a sign that it has strengthened as well. So the forecast keeps it as a Category 4 hurricane, and I wouldn't be surprised if it tries to become a Category 5 briefly, uh, but hopefully it weakens before it tries to get to land. But at the moment, the latest forecast calls for it to remain a Category 4 all the way through Thursday evening when it would make landfall. Now, many folks are focused on this line here, the most likely path. While that may be the most likely path, after that point, it is probably going to meander around here in this entire cone somewhere for days. And there's some models which keep updating and have it going closer to Hatteras. We cannot rule that uh, possibility out. Let's take a look. Here they are. There's a couple in here which bring it very close to Hatteras, even though it looks like the consensus is a little bit more to the south and west. Uh, several are, uh, and these are recent updates too. Some of these, they do have it going in here, and you can see how many of these models have a curly cue. They're just zigzagging all over the place. That's a sign it could hang out for a long time. And that would not be a good situation. So here's a couple models uh, they're, they're from this morning, the GFS and the European. And so this is going to create a different scenario for us. The European, if it follows through, it would be more inland and weaker, and we would get uh, spared most of the storm. But the GFS, if it were to work its way in here towards uh, between Hatteras and Wilmington, well, at that point, I think we'd be seeing uh, winds for a long period of time. You can see all these pressure lines together. We get a lot of wind here in Hampton Road and a lot of wind and storm surge and hurricane force conditions along the Outer Banks. And the latest GFS came in, by the way, and it puts it right over Hatteras for a long time. Here's our future track long range. I want to focus on this for a moment because it kind of shows you where that uh, center is. And that is agreeing with the GFS that it would be sitting offshore here for uh, some time. This is Thursday into Friday. And so with that scenario, that's a scary scenario for Hampton Roads because we would see a lot of problems. So kind of combining those two with the, the worst case scenario, worst case, uh, at least winds of over 50 miles an hour in Hampton Roads, winds over 60 miles an hour in North Carolina, and probably some hurricane force conditions there as well. Severe major tidal flooding with that, and lots of rain and flooding for the region as it meanders around. If it follows the European, you know, that's a great scenario for us compared to the other one. Not as much wind, tidal flooding wouldn't be as bad, and a lot of the rain would be farther inland. But these are not set yet. They're still disagreeing. And I'm thinking we're going to get a scenario that's in between those two, but that's not set just yet. In the next 12 hours, I'm hoping the models come together. We can really get a better idea which way it wants to go. But remember, the models have to take into account that recent spike in strength. So it's really going to be probably this evening, uh, probably around 11 o'clock, 10, 11 o'clock, with those models coming in, that they'll really digest what happened with the uh, hurricane just recently. So watch for those updates. We'll have updates throughout the afternoon and evening. Plan for the week. Plan for the weather to deteriorate later this week. Update your kits. And again, if you've been told to evacuate, please do so, especially along the Outer Banks in those appropriate areas. Prepare for possible flooding in Hampton Roads around the whole viewing area that we could possibly see some flooding. We've already had so much rain recently, it's not going to take much. The ground's saturated. We had a lot of rain on the eastern shore just yesterday. That continued. Had a few showers uh, just recently around Dare County. They're still going. 
But Hampton Roads, things are quiet, but there's still some flooding happening over around Highway 13 because of so much rain from last night. I think some of that area had about 10 inches, maybe even a little bit more than that, looking at the latest. But here in Hampton Roads, things quiet right now, not much for rain. There's those showers over mainland Dare. So the forecast calls for a few showers to develop towards the afternoon. Uh, it's kind of backed off the rain a little bit. I'm calling for a 30 to 40 percent chance of rain, and it does pick up between 3 and 6 p.m. Overnight spotty showers. There's 7 a.m. tomorrow morning, and then tomorrow through the day, we're going to see a better chance for some rain and storms in the afternoon. And it's just because it's so humid out. There's a boundary out there now lifting north, but tomorrow it's just the heat and humidity. Today it's going to be in the mid to upper 80s. We've got a few scattered showers, probably a few 90s inland, but not many. But it's just muggy. Winds out of the south, 5 to 10 miles an hour. And we had some tidal flooding this morning. Now going forward, it should be more nuisance tidal flooding. Shouldn't be quite as bad, but uh, that is from maybe. Some of the swell, a small amount of the swell from Florence, but we've also just had a, a naturally higher tide, which should, the natural tide should go down later this week. But again, with Florence, if it follows one of these uh, worst case scenarios, then we could be talking about some uh, big time tidal flooding. We'll see. Yeah. It's, it's